hi guys welcome to my youtube channel this is pascal concepts photography and today i'm going to show you how to retouch professionally so the first thing you do drag in your so um your image into photoshop this is the image i'll be using the image of shagun that was shot is is one of my students so then now crop to 8x10 because that is the best size i'll be uploading this image on instagram so this is 8x10 you crop to 8x10 so you get the best quality at the end of the day so if you mark this is 8x10 or 4x5 ratio so the so the next you can see the image it was shot just with one light one light setup with a silver reflector 90 centimeter silver reflector i'll be using action for this so now this is my frequency separation action then i'll play it it's going to run to create the layers and all of that this can be created manually too i'll drop a video on how to create your actions with time so frequency separation will divide your sub your uh the it will divide it will put your image into it will separate them into color and texture color layer and texture layer so you can easily rename this the lower layer is the low frequency separation layer and it's also known as the color layer whereas the texture background is the high frequency layer now we're going to work on the color layer by using our what by using the mixer brush tool mixer brush tool that is what we'll be using and then take note of the settings i'll be using here my weight um you have to use a clean brush that brush needs to be selected just like this right click you have a clean brush then let your weight be on 10 percent load 75 percent mix 90 percent flow is on 100 percent your smooth snares can be on i usually leave it on 10 percent so you can just rearrange everything like this and then we are good to go okay then my hardness hardness is always on zero percent i don't need to increase my hardness hardness of my brush then the size of my brush it, it is uh my crease it based on the area i want to use it you know to clean now i love to work with black and white because black and white reveals most of the things i do you know it will make you see the texture well and every other thing that when is in color you might not be able to see so i can easily add black and white from my adjustment layer on my adjustment layer so this is you come to your adjustment layer click on black and white on top it should be on you know it's on layer or you can also come here your black and white you can easily reduce the red just make it you know pop out you know uh, uh, something like this so, so arrange put your black and white the black and white will be displayed you will delete it at the end of the day so come back to the color layer that's where we want to work on now we want to do blending you are using your mixer brush too and make sure your foreground color is um is, is black so you use your mixer brush too to begin to blend blending your highlight to highlight shadow to shadow then be careful about how to blend in the mid tone so this is how you do it you begin to blend 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 at first you might not see the difference of about um the difference in what you're doing you can easily see of the black and white layer and then bring it back you know to just see what you've done so far you can turn off the frequency separation layer background layer to see the before and after you know to see how far you've gone so keep on blending blend because this is the best part if you don't do your work the blending here very well um you might not really get the desired result so try to blend blend your work very well here blend so just keep on blending blend highlight to highlight shadow to shadow just keep on blending blend 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 blend
then you can turn off the black and white layer turn off the main frequency separation layer okay it seems as if we've not really done anything so keep on doing it because this is the best part get the best blending blend in your images very your image very well here blend keep on blending blend just as if you're using a pen or you're using a brush you know to brush because you're using a mixer brush to to mix you know the um the, the texture and the color and everything so you're using it just blending your your color very well blend your highlight to highlight your shadow to shadow um and then your mid tone just keep on blending blend you can see just keep on blending blend your image blend well keep on blending blend blend keep on blending blend very well okay you can see what we've done so far with the blending we've done we've achieved a lot without removing blemishes and see how smooth it's becoming just keep on blending blend So now the next thing we do is to work on our texture layer we work on our texture layer and still bring back your black and white you can see what we've done so far when we, we turn off the um, frequency separation layer you can see what we've done so far so you can bring back the frequency separation layer then now it's high time we work on the texture layer if you're okay with your blending so now we are going to work on the texture layer so now to work on so we, we are still working on the color layer now you pick your polygonal lasso to, um, you pick your lasso to make sure your feather is on 15 pixel then use your lasso to, to select an area where we want to because we want to make everything we want to make it smooth now so select where you want to select a particular point and make sure you avoid the edges you shouldn't really get to that edge then move to your filter blur gaussian blur filter blur gaussian blur all right let me explain what will happen here because we're using we used action i didn't mean we're using we're doing this um the frequency separation in a manual manner the first radius we use i use most of the time for my portraits even for a full body shot is between eight and nine eight and nine so when you now come into this when you get to this level the right amount of radius to use is the first amount of radius times three plus two so now let's say we have eight eight will now be eight times three that is 24 plus two that is 26. if the first radius you used was nine it will be nine times three that is 27 plus two that will be 29. so you can um the best radius i use in most for most of my images they are between 20 radius 20 to 30 with 20 to 30 or you can or better still just increase the radius till you think you are okay you can increase it look at it so if you think you are okay then click on your okay all right so this is it you think you're okay so let's then you can deselect just um, right click deselect or press ctrl and d on your keyboard or command and d so let's go and see what we've done so far and just go back um okay mix up brush okay come back here yeah. okay let me turn off the black and white so we can easily see what we've done all right so i can deselect 
and come back all right so we're good to go so this is the before like the before and after so if you think the blending the gaussian blur you applied was too much there is a way in which you can reduce it as well let me show you so if you think it's too much okay you can just go back after adding the gaussian blur okay let's uh, let, let me um deselect it so okay remove the black and white i want to show you how to you know to reduce that amount of gaussian blur you apply to a particular point so pick your last two again then select that place make sure your feather is on 15 pixel okay let me select this way i'm selecting the forehead okay let me remove this um, the, from the eyelid oh. so now i'll go to my filter blow gaussian blow so because it was 26 i used at the last time so let me leave it on 26 i'll click on on okay you know because it was eight then eight times three that is 24 plus two that's 26 if the first radius was 10 so it's now be the best amount of radius will now be 10 times 3 that's 30 plus 2 that will be 32 so you can easily impute 32 but since i used 8 at first now the amount the best amount for me to use is 26 that is 20 um 8 times 3 which is 24 plus 2 that is 26 all right so if i think it's too much i can just fade a bit out i can fade out part of the of the gaussian blur i applied by pressing on ctrl plus shift and f on my keyboard this will bring up this fade then i can increase or decrease my fade you know i would decrease it if i think the the gaussian blur was much so i will reduce it i think around 80 90 is okay for me or i can just leave it at 100 percent so that's how you do it for any of the parts you select Control plus shift on your keyboard and f Control shift f or command plus shift plus f it will bring up fade then you can easily fade reduce the fadeness you know you reduce the fade of the gaussian block then when you're done you right click and deselect or press command d or Control plus d on your keyboard that's what you do to every part of your image because this we are applying the same amount of gaussian blur that we applied on the forehead you know compared to that area the area the forehead is far from bigger than this little eyelid um, part that we selected now so what we we'll do is that i will apply that same gaussian blur then i will use my fade to reduce the effect of the gaussian blur on this part that i just selected so that's how do. you can see it so now you can you feather instead of always going back to that filter just press right click and then you see gaussian blow if you apply that last gaussian blow you used if you apply it to that particular place then if it's too much press um, you can either right click it will show you fade gaussian blow or press ctrl plus shift plus f on your keyboard then you reduce it so this is how you do for every of the area just keep on applying your blow gaussian blow reduce the size um increase reduce the fed uh, the fade and all so this is how you do it just select bit by bit don't don't select every area for example the cheek you just select everything together select them bit by bit so that at the end of the day all your texture everything will still be intact the nose and all you know you shouldn't lose um, the, the quality the texture so that is how you do even for the lips the mouth just reduce use a little um, blow to it so that's how you do for it to maintain a very very nice overall image when you're done and then all the actions used in this video they are in the description box in the description of this video the, the the action for the frequency separation 
the different um the lot file that we'll be using for color grading the dodge and bones to whiten the eyes and all everything is in the description button just click on the description button and then you see the link the link to download even this image for you to practice everything is in the description below so I please guys don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel follow me on my social media other social media platform on my instagram so now we'll be working on the texture layer and then using it to work on the texture layer we are going to remove blemishes and then we'll be using the words we'll be using the clone stamp tool clone stamp tool select your clone stamp tool make sure your opacity is on 100 percent your flow tool should be on 100 percent then use it to just remove the blemishes you know how to use the clone stamp tool you sample a particular area press hold your alt button down on your keyboard then um sample a place and then use it to clean the blemish you want you can't select a darker part to clean up a brighter part you can select shadow to clean up highlights so make sure the portion you're using to clean at a particular place is closer you know they have almost same property the lightness and all at the same then just keep on um, keep on removing blemishes by using the clone stamp tool to do this and you can still always work with your black and white because your black and white will reveal most of the blemishes that while in color black and um, in color you might not be able to see very well so just blend and then you can always turn on the black and white layer bring it back to just see what you've done so far and where else you want to work on just the way i am doing right now so you use your clone stamp tool make sure your opacity is on 100 percent your flow is on 100 percent as well so this is what we've done so far on the frequency separation the before and after before and after before and after okay so we've achieved a lot so the next thing to do is to do what we call dodge and burn and dodge and burn is all about giving your image dimension you know i have the action too i'll be using an action that i created for dodge and burn dodge and burn is dodge you dodge highlights whereas you burn shadows because when you burn something it turns to black so you burn shadows you dodge highlight dodge and burn so this is dodge and burn um, action i'll play it so i already added black and white to it so at the end of the day i will still delete the black and white just the way i have in the frequency separation it's just for me the black and white easily makes me see where to dodge and where to burn you can see the highlights highlight means the place that is bright so you'll be dodging making the place that is bright brighter by dodging it whereas you burn the place that is dark you make it a bit darker because when you have female with um good makeup on you know all those the contour and everything those parts you're going to do to, to burn them whereas the highlights the contour the nose and all you're going to you know you're going to dodge so we'll be using dodge and burn and then we'll be using brush just the normal brush that is what we'll be using so let's work with as long as you know you have a black you have a black uh, mask here now so that means for you to use a brush the brush you'll be using is going to be a white brush a white brush and i love setting my uh, opacity to be on 10 percent my flow on 100 percent and my hardness the hardness of my brush is always on zero percent then the brush size depends on the part i'm going to you know to to brush the part i'm going to either burn or either touch so my foreground has to be white because the foreground now is still black i can be using a black brush on a black mask so i can easily switch the black the white color to the foreground color by pressing my x on the keyboard x x letter x you know to move the foreground color to the background color just like that so my foreground color has to be white then i can start using it to 
dodge and then to bone when i'm done with dodging i'll come to the bone layer to the bone mask and then i'll use my brush on it you know it will now give your image it will give it dimension do you understand it will give your image dimension you, you know just do your dodge and bone the place that is bright that needs to be bright make it a bit brighter then the place that needs to be dark make it a bit darker you can see the effect on the layer see what um the dodge alone has done so far so now i'm going to do my bone the cheekbone then the lining of the nose to just contour the nose to make the nose um as a better shape and most time i don't really do dodge and bone for guys but i do dodge and bone for females very well so at the end of the day if i just if i'm done i'll just reduce the overall opacity of either the bone the dodge and then even the dodge and bone itself to just have a little dodge and bone effects on my image now i have dimension see before and after see the nose that's the effect of dodge and bone so the next thing i'm going to do is to whiten the eye i have the action too to whiten so i'll play it and then since this is a black mask i need to use a white brush just here and then for my brightness it's still, this same action is what i use in brightening the teeth as well i didn't mean the mouth was opened so and then i'll have to set my opacity to 50 percent and my flow to 30 percent that's what i use for whitening the eyes and to whiten the teeth as well i use 50 percent opacity 30 percent flow it depends on what you really want so you zoom in then you use your brush just clean up the eyes the the part you want to be white either the eyes and the teeth and all and then you're good to go so this is how you do it reduce the size of your brush to you know don't just don't brush off where you don't really want use a very small brush increase you know clean off the color on the white area so you can decide to use more than 50 percent for your own opacity maybe at the end of the day you just reduce the overall opacity on this on the adjustment layer here you can reduce the overall opacity so this is you can see before and after cleaning the eye before after before and after so then the next thing i will do is to do what is called braiding i'll act like okay i know this image is not that sharp now but just follow this just follow my step so now what i tend to do is i can i can just flatten the image you know so that i can add a bit of brightness contrast um some other colors and all and then i'm going to show you how you use my lot files to do color grading to color grade i use my lot files for color grading i'm going to show you the different ones so now i'll add my brightness and contrast mark the used legacy i use around two to three of the contrast i'll just add it and, and it's just you can see the effect on this you can see the contrast is a, is a bit increased you can see the contrast so now what i do is that i will flatten my image you can see the effects of the brightness and contrast brightness and contrast so so what i will do next is to flatten my image i right click and flatten image okay this card isn't yes okay so now i have a single image i will now what i do next is i add auto contrast again i will duplicate my image because i still want to have my original um image you can either you can duplicate by pressing ctrl and j on your keyboard or just drag the layer you want to duplicate into the create layer then auto contrast so let's see before and after can you see before after before after so i think we are well i'm good i'm okay with this image the way it is so i will see flattening it again then 
the next thing i will do is to sharpen it because i think it's not that sharp to my taste then i also use an action for sharpness i'll use an action for sharpness all these actions they are in the description below they are in the description in this video so these are my lot files i'll be showing you how to use you know to use these my lot files to color grade i'll use this to color grade you know you come to your color lookup these are my lot files you can see the pascal 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 they are the um the lot files are created and then is this fellow chocolate lots that i'll be really using for this image because that was what i used for the image and it's very very nice it's a very nice i have these lot files and more in the description below just it's for a token and then if you think you don't want to use the exact one i use you can create your own lot file go through my videos i there was i I once created a video of how to create your lot files, um, your actions and all. So go through my video, you can download or better still, get my full pack um, color grading lot files. I think I have about 10 of them for black and white, um, the one for orange and teal, blue, they're just good to go. So you can have one and then just play with the opacity. You might not use 100 percent opacity from the adjustment layer so that you have a very good image just reduce the opacity so um this is the way this one appears my orange and teal then this one is just for you know that skin so let me come back to this fellow chocolate this is what i'll be using then i'll just reduce the opacity you see if you're using 100 percent it will give you another look but let me use around 60 50 60 percent okay and then so like this like this okay before and after before and after before and after so i think my image is not too sharp even after adding the contrast and all so the last step the last thing i'll have to do i'll flatten my image as well then i will apply my sharpness for with action i have I apply the sharpness okay sharpen i'll come to this pascal concept um it's actually a three in one action file the skin smoothness softening is there portrait pop is there so i'll use the sharpen so see the effect of the sharpness the sharpen action so to bring up um i use around two to three radius so let me leave it at this three the radius are three click on okay then we're good to go so let's see the effect of this sharpen on the image so far wow this is nice so if i think it's too sharp i can always play with my opacity here i will reduce my opacity and we are good to go i will reduce my opacity okay maybe around 70 between 70 uh should i use 50 okay i think yes between 50 to 70 percent sometimes or most of the time the sharpness is just very very nice at that level you can see and then with practice you can easily do this within 10 minutes you are good then flatten the image so let's see what we've done so far the before and after before um all right this was the before <laughs> you can easily you can see the change you can see the difference this is after before and after before and after this image is wonderful you have in the description to i drop the jpeg the converted jpeg of this image in the description so thank you guys for watching subscribe to my youtube channel let me um check my next video on how to export for instagram for social media for social media without losing quality all right subscribe to my youtube channel follow me on instagram or uh, my facebook page on twitter let me know the next video you love me to upload i will see you guys next time thank you thank you